horrible. Did you see the video of the truck in Pennsylvania? That supposedly people are like, oh, wh- I wonder what happened. Why did this truck suddenly flip? What weird force suddenly flipped the truck? It was, it was on the, the Daily Mail like four or five days ago, and people were speculating, oh, could it have been wind? No, if you clearly watch the guy's video because he had a dash cam, you can see he hits, like he, he's going over a bridge, and you can see the road, and this is something that Christina and I noticed going north to south more than, yeah. she pointed this out, more than east to west. I'm going to let her like get into this, but the the road sags before a bridge, like a lot of these older bridges, the roads are like sagging down before and after the, where the bridge starts and ends. And you can see this guy he goes over a bridge and the truck hits it. And you can see, like I said to her, the guy was going at a decent rate of speed and he had a, um, it was a, uh, the trailer was a dump trailer, like a full length dump trailer. And he was loaded yeah. with dirt. So, you know, he's got a, a ton of weight in there. Sure. He's, he's driving. If those back tires left the ground, even for a microsecond, Joe, it's going to it'll Bad give it enough happen. time. Right. And then the tires come back down and you actually hear it when you can hear the tires leave. If you listen to the video, you, you hear the tires go and then the thing loses it. Yeah. And that's when he goes, he goes, oh, shit. And the thing flips and everybody's like, oh, what could it have been? And Christina actually pointed it out to me. She sent me the video and she said, all she said to me was, what do you see when you watch this video? And the guy's driving along and I'm watching and all of a sudden I see the bridge and I go, wow, that looks like a dip. And he hits it. And the truck just, I mean, rolls. So that's kind of scary. Being so, a, a retired driver myself, I mean, yeah. that's 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 to the point where they need to do something about so, that road. So you talk about earth changes, right? I think a lot of it, too, has to do with earth changes. Not so much that the fact that they don't pave the roads as often or whatever, but when, what I do notice is that the roads are buckling a lot more because of the increased radiation because our magnetic field is weakening. The Earth's magnetic field's weakening. We get more of that radio radiation. It's absorbed in the asphalt, and then, then what happens? You, it heats up more. It buckles. You, you think um, you think it's just that, or do you think the the, the Earth is moving itself? That too. Uh, well, but but why why would it move? Maybe the Earth is expanding because it's absorbing more of that radiation that that radi- cosmic radiation that's coming in that's getting through because the, our shields are dropping, dude. Are, are are you talking about like space weather, Joe? Space weather. Okay, we're going to get into that too, so don't worry. Space, it has to do with earth changes. Christina, what say you about the uh, earth changes, the bridges, and uh, all of that? Well, you know, we've been wanting to do this show for a while, ever since we went out to the Grand Canyon and back uh, in the summertime. Is that when you geeked out and went to the meteor? Yes, yes. Okay, I just wanted to saw, make sure. Okay. We saw a lot of weird stuff going on, like at Kansas and Oklahoma. In Texas, um, huge cracks in the ground where even some of these um, irrigation uh, mechanisms, I don't know what they're called, those big irrigation things, they, they're on wheels and they go across the ground and they water. What? Yeah, they're like, they're, they're like a huge, it's, it's like a huge like gantry arm with wheels and sprayer heads. And they, I forget, they're just a, they, they use them to irrigate the field. Yeah. Yeah. But they're going across fields with huge cracks in them. And so as soon as we got back and I started like seeing what I could find online, people in Kansas and Oklahoma had been talking about this for years. This has been going on and these machines keep getting stuck. Their wheels get stuck in the newly formed cracks. And they thought that it was probably due to, um, overuse of the aquifer. I mean, I've heard all kinds of different explanations and we know that that's a problem around big cities. You know, it happened in Tokyo in the 1920s, which is why they don't drink out of their aquifers anymore because the whole city started sinking. And now what we've noticed though, yeah, you're looking at me like, what? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about that some other time. You can, you can see like chimneys and um, sewer systems and everything actually started raising up because the cities were sinking. And this happened in Mexico City a number of years ago, too. And they're saying, we, we got to stop pulling out of the aquifer because the city is sinking because you have so many people using water. But anyway, what's going on between Michigan and Florida is different. The bridges all seem like they're raised higher than the, the road itself. And you can see that they've patched and repatched over and over and over again where the road meets the bridge and that it's continually um, subsiding underneath there because they're coming out to repatch or the road is closed completely. 
And so you know, we've gone like back and forth like three times in the last four months along that route. And this time was far worse than the other times. I mean, the other times it was noticeable, but this time it was like, holy crap, what is going on here? There were actually two bridges in Ohio, and I can tell you exactly which ones they were. One was in Pequa, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but um, it's south of Lima, north of Dayton, and then a bridge in Dayton as well. And you're still driving on the bridge, even though they're rebuilding like another bridge next to it. And the bridge that you're driving on is actually angled probably two degrees to the right. Like the whole bridge is falling, like shifting to the right. And then there's, um, you know, they're rerouting people all over. I mean, like half of Ohio is under construction. And they've had projects going on there for years. But this problem with the bridges is what this guy hit in the semi. And as soon as I saw that video, I mean, it reminded me of driving over all of these bridges. And I'm like, we've got to do a show on this. I mean, we cannot be the only people (laughs) noticing this on I-75. And it's north and south, both directions, pretty much through Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. And once you get south of the Rockies... You don't see that happening anymore. It's only in those states, and it's pretty much every bridge going north and south on 75 that this is happening to. Isn't that the New Madrid zone, too, right around there? Well, the the New Madrid zone, yes, is, is more central to Missouri, but... Um, Jack Reed, who's a reti- who was a retired U.S. GS, uh, geologist, had um, had put out. He's he's actually written a couple of papers on this. And if you search online Jack Reed's theory, you'll see some of this research come up where he had said from his um, study of fault lines in the Gulf of Mexico that the Gulf of Mexico fault lines actually extend all the way up through the New Madrid, and then they take kind of a hard right. Um, just below Michigan, they cut through Pennsylvania and then up um, t- and join with the St. Lawrence Seaway, which is also a big fault. And where those faults have always thought to not be connected, he said, no, they definitely are. And he gave all of his reasons why. And no one's ever really extrapolated upon that research. But if you watch earthquakes and where these like boom events happen, you know, where people, they'll be hearing booms for a period of weeks and, you know, they come out and they say, oh, it's frost quakes and it's, you know, people shooting at Tannerite targets and it's this and it's that. And, you know, we, we blew something up here in an Air Force base. But you have these people that are saying they're hearing booms, their houses are shaking, they're getting cracks in their foundation. And this has kind of been happening like over the last couple of years, ever since the sinkhole happened in Bayou Corn pretty much all the way up through the St. Lawrence Seaway. We're seeing earthquakes that happen all along that. And when Popeye and I and I were together on this road trip, we actually heard or felt three different earthquakes in three different states in one week. One was in Michigan. We heard this huge rumble and like four or five days later, just as we got to the Grand Canyon, they had an earthquake. It was like a 4-6 in Kalamazoo. And then um, in Oklahoma and in Kansas. And I even talked to some of the people that worked in the hotel in, in Oklahoma. And I said, you know, what's up with these earthquakes? You know, I felt one last night. I heard it first. And then you felt it afterward. So, I mean, in the period of a week, we just happened to hit like three hot spots like this. And, um, you know, with all the other stuff we've been following with, you know, what Donna Young's been telling me about the hydrogen sulfide, you know, and, and the other earthquakes that have happened, there's been a swarm near the real foot fault in Missouri. And, and within the last 10 days, I, they think they've had a series of like two, two, maybe three pointers, like pretty small. I think maybe the highest was like a two six. You know, we expect to see some movement, but anytime there's a swarm and then you have sinkholes happening, you have, you know... Um, other other things that people are noticing, and then so much infrastructure damage. I mean, I know about Wigner and how that could be affecting the infrastructure. I don't think that's what's going on here. It it almost seems like it's more of an expanding Earth type thing that's happening. And anyone who's driven on seventy five would have noticed this in those states. 
and it's really bad. This last time over Thanksgiving, it was really bad. Like at a, a point where you felt like the car was bottoming out when you drove over these. It's it's almost it. It looks like the the earth is being pulled apart in these areas where where the roadways are meeting the bridges. And if you go and you just search like bridges sinking, you'll see all kinds of stories. There was one in Indiana near Lafayette, Indiana. That happened in August where a bridge sunk like nine inches overnight and they had to close like 60 miles of highway because there was no way to like really route people nearby, reroute people nearby while they fixed this problem. This is really widespread. Whatever is happening is really widespread.